Liberty to me means that I can talk, that I can make my voice be heard. Liberty is being able to do what pleases you, what is right. That's what I call liberty. Freedom for me is to come and go as I please every day without being in prison or being watched by anyone. La liberté signifie que mes droits sont respectés. لا أحد يفهم ما هي الحرية حتى يتم سلبها منه. Every year, seven million children around the world lose their freedom. They can be deprived of liberty in prisons, police custody, orphanages, and migration detention centers. We know little about what goes on inside these closed institutions and what it's like to be deprived of liberty as a child. The UN tried to find out. For three years, they have been speaking with nearly 300 children, trying to understand what it's like for a child to lose freedom. No child should ever spend more than 24 hours in police custody. The United Nations guidelines are clear. If you are under 18 and you broke the law, the government should send you to a foster home or a state program that is outside the prison system. But in reality, more than 1.4 million children are locked up in prisons around the world, most of them in the Americas. 1.4 million people is a huge number enough to fill up 30,000 city buses. It's hard to imagine. Juan is one of them. He was arrested for drug dealing after living on his own on the street for years. He was sent to a special prison for young people. For Juan, prison is a place that is never quiet. A place that makes kids Victims of an impressive suffering, of impressive resentment. Like many other kids, Juan told the UN researchers that he rarely had enough to eat in prison. He was bullied and abused. There's no evidence that putting kids in prison actually helps prevent crime. But there is plenty of evidence that shows the negative effects can stay with them for life. Even though one in three crimes committed by children are by girls, 94% of all detained children are boys. The girls who do get detained often deal with sexual harassment in prisons. Children who don't conform to a typical male-female role face violence. For all kids, their health suffers. Kids can stop growing or grow more slowly Abuse, stress, and malnutrition leave them with lifelong challenges. There are kids who are in prison without ever having committed a crime. More than 19,000 live in prison with their parent or caretaker. Lolita is just two, Diego not even one, and they live with their mom. This cell is the only home they know. There is no one rule for what to do when a kid's parent goes to jail. Diego and Lolita's mother says her kids shouldn't grow up this way. There is nothing she wants more for them than their freedom, even if it means they live without her. There are even more children who are sent away to live without their family in institutions. Most institutions are run by the government, each child is there for their own reason. But 80% of them actually have at least one living parent. 5.4 million children live in institutions worldwide. Irene is one of them. She was sent to a government shelter with other girls who had been sold and trafficked into prostitution. All she wanted was to go back home to her mom. But she wasn't allowed to. I felt no one listened to my wish of returning home. 
At institutions, there are thousands of kids living with disabilities who were sent there instead of getting proper care. Discrimination and a lack of support for parents often leads to children with disabilities ending up in institutions. Countries should be changing laws that allow children to be put in an institution because they have a disability. The government can, if they want to, close down these places and put children in smaller homes like foster families where they can be part of a community. It's called deinstitutionalization. UN experts say this is much better for kids, but few governments do this today. Then there are those kids who take their lives into their own hands and flee their homes. Jamil left his home in North Africa for Europe. In Albania, he was arrested for migrating illegally, handcuffed and hooded by police. He was sent to a center for migrants where he was held with adults and beaten by guards. I would hear people screaming. Over 80 countries allow children to be detained for migration reasons. UN guidelines say this is never acceptable. Other children lose their freedom without ever leaving home. More than one in six kids lives in a conflict zone. Each year, 35,000 children are detained in these places, often held for weeks, months, or even years without charge. War came to Sani. An armed group called Boko Haram attacked his village. He was able to hide and save his own life. But when the fighting stopped, government soldiers arrested him. They said he was a member of the group that had just attacked his village. They sent him to a military detention center, but never charged him with a crime. Sani and the other kids who spoke to the UN said the conditions at these detention centers are violent and dirty. The hardest part was the smell of the toilet. When the smell was very bad, it made me want to faint. Even in countries that are not at war, children are being arrested for national security reasons. Government police arrested Asser for belonging to a banned group called the Muslim Brotherhood. Like with Sani, they gave no evidence. Asser was held in prison for three years with no trial. But the real number is likely much bigger than this. Kids who are detained for belonging to armed groups aren't criminals, they are victims. Countries shouldn't detain or punish these kids through military courts. Instead, they should be given help and support by the government. The UN talked to all of these kids because they believe they have something important to tell all of us. Children have the right to ask questions about their situation, and their views should be taken into consideration as much as possible. But talking with these kids is just the first step. To change how children are being treated, adults in power need to better understand this issue. The adults working with kids need to be properly trained for this work too. Kids who lose their freedom are having their childhood and their future taken away. Taking away a kid's freedom should only happen if there's no other option available. If it has to be done, then only for the shortest time possible. Around the world, governments need to reduce the number of children that are locked up and do whatever possible to make sure kids can live in families. Some kids also share positive experiences about their detention. Access to education, job training, and sports gave them hope for their future. After meeting a music teacher in prison, Juan fell in love with rap and says it's given him another chance. Jamil joined an international advisory group for children's rights. Sani is focusing on school and hopes to become a doctor. Many of the kids shared what kind of changes they want to see happen. <laughs>